Hi everyone, this is Freddie with Superbike Unlimited and we're going to be bringing you another update on our V4R Superbike project. Um, and we have another round of upgrades and improvements that we're now moving on to. Uh, and one of the first ones is going to be installing our plastic bike bodywork. Uh, plastic bike is an Italian manufacturer of bodywork that makes uh, bodywork for several World Superbike teams including the Factory Yamaha program, uh, Barney's uh, Ducati World Superbike effort and several other top tier teams and uh, we're the US distributor for that that brand and just makes sense for us to switch to that stuff while we like what we have on here um, I do kind of prefer the plastic bike I think it's a little bit easier to work with and it's obviously got its heritage in a you know top spec series so I think it's gonna be good so something that we're doing right away is they come with these brackets and these are uh, basically something that mounts here and you can see what Tex has done is basically he's replicated this bracket which is actually pretty light uh, but we have this carbon fiber sheet and what Tex has done is replicated that uh, out of carbon fiber and and then what happens is you essentially have to remove the factory rivets that go on this fuel tank and you just drill those out right in the middle and there's like this velcro type stuff that goes right here that all comes off um, however the bracket will need to be spaced off of the the fuel tank a bit we used this kind of like rubber damping material um, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. If you buy one of these kits, uh, which we have in you know, carbon like we're using or fiberglass, and you install this, this does get riveted on here. There's then a clip that goes here, and uh, you're just gonna have to make sure that you space it off. Otherwise, there's this little rise here that's gonna cause some interference. So that's something that we're gonna be moving on to. I also wanted to point out that with our uh, electronics package, we received a brand new, um, uh, power distribution unit um, and you know you may recall we were having some issues with that and our long-term solution uh, that didn't involve using that starter battery deal was to basically add in the factory relay and you know a reasonably tidy solution but uh, the guys from bike sport developments made a special version of that PDU and we've gotten that installed and it works perfectly so just by moving that back on I think we dropped something like a quarter of a pound back off the bike so that's a positive upgrade and then lastly we finally gotten our proper springs for the uh super bike shock absorber from Olean's. so that's something that we're going to be able to set up properly and uh i think that's going to be a really big improvement lastly we're going to be putting this bike back on the dyno to do some uh calibration and some more fuel mapping and it'll be really interesting to see now that it's fully broken in uh what kind of power we're making so that's going to be coming up next okay everyone so we've got some uh Good news and some bad news with how things have been coming along on the V4 here. Good news is that, of course, we've been doing some uh, cylinder tuning at the racetrack. Um, you guys may recall from the earlier video that with our first uh, several dyno runs, we really had very little time to get the bike actually tuned in because of the issues we were having with our um, PDU, which of course has been resolved now. Um, but it, it left us with a very small window of time to actually do a calibration and get this thing dialed in for the racetrack. So. Uh, since then, we've also been really busy at the racetrack, or excuse me, here at the shop. Let the UPS guy go by. And uh, as a result, we just haven't been able to spend as much time on actually tuning this thing as we'd like. However, uh, today we've been working on it and uh, we're gonna show you some pulls and uh, we're gonna see how this thing does with some, some proper cylinder trims done. Uh, and I say trims, really, these are actually full tables. It's not actually a trim. Each one of these cylinders has to be completely tuned individually. There's not a base fuel map. It's literally each cylinder has to have its own fuel map that's perfectly tuned in. And for good reason. We've seen that this engine really likes per cylinder uh, tuning. It, it responds very well to that. And each cylinder is very different from another, not just each bank. So it's quite important that you get that right. So um, we've uh, we've done some preliminary stuff. It's still There's still room for improvement. We're going to keep working on it. Um, but we've seen that it responds very well to that. So, uh, on to the bad news. Unfortunately, our race body work that we are trying to install on this, it doesn't look like it's going to work with our spec of bike. And what I mean by that is this is a, obviously a proper super bike. We've got this gigantic radiator and oil cooler, and we have some other components that are, um, you know, like this front intake area here that are really not super stock legal. And for that reason, our upper and side panels just don't quite fit and we can't modify them to the extent that we would need to to allow that clearance. And it's really a bummer because we actually really like this other bodywork 
don't get me wrong we like the stuff that we have on here which you know we offer both for sale on our web store this stuff is nice uh, it looks cool but i personally find that the other uh, the plastic bike carbon fiber body work i think it's a little nicer it's certainly a little bit easier to work with and uh it, it just i think the fit and finish of it's just a little bit nicer um and i like the way the intake ducts are shaped and some other things that seem to be a bit more refined so i'm kind of disappointed and also uh, something that's really important it seems to have a bit more flex in it uh, which is really important because if the thing does go down you don't want the bodywork to basically just explode you'd like it to survive potentially be repaired um, or at least you know enough to where you can continue using it um, this stuff while it looks super trick it doesn't take paint very well and the uh, the big concern is that realistically if it bends it's going to break you can it's quite sort of brittle and, and inflexible so we will show you what this other stuff looks like um just so you can see what it looks like it's not going to be on the bike so we're, we're just not going to have uh that as an option with this stuff but you can at least see what the the overall design is so this is the upper um and you know it's the other thing is it, it looks more like your traditional coarse style bodywork. um it's got the uh the plain weave carbon we are using a stock uh, winglet there uh, we had planned to just retain those with this but it just looks really nice and you can see that the intake ducts are shaped just like the SBK uh, to create that optimal intake velocity and everything on this on this body just looks really on point it's uh, one of those things that I'm kind of disappointed so what we're gonna try to do is find a uh, we're, first we're gonna see if plastic bike will will offer us one of their special super bike kits you know we think they probably will but it's something we have to get to, to make sure that's something that they're allowed to do and that they'll honor for us and hopefully we can get one of those and put it on um and uh you know we'll, we'll go from there for now we're going to keep using the other stuff it's working fine and we're going to get a different seat that's one thing that i'm not a big fan of is the the ducati performance seat i think it's it's good but i think that a proper race seat's going to be better so that's going to be next so anyway on to some pulls let's see uh how it sounds and how it looks, and then we'll see how it performs. Okay, so now we've done some pulls, and uh, frankly, I can still see there's quite a bit of room for, for finer adjustment and improvement, and I think that we're still going to find probably another three horsepower or so. Um, it's just going to take some time. This is not a really a slow process It's to do this stuff correctly, especially with there being four individual fuel maps that have to be tuned correctly. It's very time-consuming, so it's going to take some time to get that perfected. Um, however, it's pretty close now. Uh, I'd say we're within 5% um, in most areas, and... Uh, uh, you know, it, it looks and feels quite strong. So let's just see where we are. Um, we'll go ahead and pull up our graph. And so now you may recall before we, I think we we're around 202 or 203. Um, we are up to almost 214 horsepower and 81 torque. So again, I do, I can actually, I'm certain we're going to pick up from that because I can see specifically that a, a couple of the, the cylinders are, are not quite perfect. And, uh, you know, again, we see a lot of dyno numbers. Uh, we see, um, you know, and as I've mentioned before, there's a lot of variance from this dyno to that dyno. So what I can tell you is that on our dyno with a, uh, a, a pump fuel, this has 93 octane, just regular old pump gas that we just went and got, um, that is an extremely good number. Um, I would, I mean, that's really, I would wager that's more than probably most of the super bikes in Moto America would make on the spec fuel on our dyno, um, probably by a good bit. Um, so 
and that's not a, a slight against those guys at all. It just is a true testament to A, how amazing the engine in this thing is, and B, the uh, importance of accurate and high quality tuning that we're doing through our MoTeC ECU system. So I'm really happy that we did that because we, we, tr we did a lot of uh, stock ECU tuning. We also tried UpMap and we tried a bunch of different stuff with the stock ECU, reflash, uh, you know, with custom calibration and stuff. And it was a big step over stock. You know, I think stock the bike made like 180 horsepower on our dyno. So, and then with uh, our up map and really honestly, the results were quite similar with all the other reflash options because we really didn't have an accurate way to do the cylinder trims. And uh, you know, it was making in the 190s. Um, still really impressive for us. I think at that point, that was probably the highest we've ever had a stock engine, um, you know, slip on bike make. But now with this, world spk full system that we have which of course as i've mentioned before you, if you want to get one of these we do have them available links in the description and the uh the motec m1 system with some really good tuning you can see i mean that's just crazy realistically and we're gonna we'll have to find out i think that if we put mr12 in this thing we're making 225 plus which is just nuts to think about i've never personally thrown a leg over something that's just that gnarly so it's going to be fun next year when we take the thing to some of the faster tracks like Roebling Road or Road Atlanta and uh, put that fuel in it. And it's just going to be crazy. I mean, I can't imagine how fast this thing's got to be. So um, anyway, that's you can see how this is going. We may uh, before this video is done, we're going to spend some more time tuning on it. I don't know that, um, you know, how much further we're going to do before we actually release the video. But as we get it really dialed in, we'll you know, we'll definitely do another update and kind of show you where our final numbers are. And uh, keep in mind, this is with a very conservative ignition timing. We don't want this thing detonating. We don't want to have any potential premature wear on our cylinder head or anything else on this engine. So we've done everything quite conservatively. Also, our rev limit. We could easily pick up another couple of horsepower by extending the rev limit further. We're not going to do that because, again, we want this bike to last. We're trying to keep maintenance to a reasonable minimum. We're going to take care of it the way it should be. On the other hand, we don't want failures, and we don't want to have to service stuff more frequently than we already do. So... I think it's pretty damn good. I'm super happy with that. Okay, everyone. So I think we're actually going to go ahead and wrap this video up. But something I did want to do is uh, show you guys uh, just how different the cylinders are uh, in our MoTeC firmware. And, you know, this is one of those things where, um, unfortunately, we can't always show you some of the really cool stuff uh, in the ECU because it's things that we've spent a lot of time and, and effort working on. And, and frankly, it's kind of like IP. And um, for that reason, we can't necessarily share some of those values or show you some of those screens um, because some of it's tables that we've built or generated that aren't even necessarily native in the firmware. And we don't necessarily want to give away some of our tips and tricks that may give us an edge on the racetrack. But we can show you some of that stuff. And if there is anything that you'd like to see, um, please ask in the comments. And if we can... Sorry about that. The battery actually died in the middle of what I was saying. So what I was saying was that if you think of anything that you want us to show you, um, you know, comment it, uh, below and, and at, feel free to ask. It's one of those things where we may not be able to do it, but if there's any way that we can accommodate the request and show you something without compromising any of our um, secret sauce, so to speak, uh, we'd like to do it. So don't be afraid to ask. So what we're going to do now is basically we have a way that we can show uh, our fuel mapping in sort of like a graphical representation uh, in the MoTeC M1, which we use a software called M1 Tune. And um, especially with this fuel map not really being entirely done yet, we don't have any issue with uh, showing you this. And I think it's going to be really helpful for seeing just how different each cylinder is. So this is what uh, M1 Tune looks like. And as you can see, just as I mentioned previously, here at the top where the, the mouse is, you can see we have cylinders uh each one of these represents a different fuel table so right now we're on cylinder one so let's just go ahead, do a quick scroll through cylinder and something also to, to focus on you may notice big differences like in this area of the graph um, and just to give you an idea so the uh the bottom axis here is engine speed and the axis here is your uh, efficiency or you could look at that as load or throttle position, something like that. It's basically a calculation, but that's an easy way to represent it. Um, something to keep in mind is this area here is not really what you want to focus on. It's going to be more in this because some of this is really just an estimate or a calculation because it's impossible to have, you know, 100% um, throttle at 1500 RPM. So we don't have that area tuned in, obviously. So this is going to be the area that's really key where you see all of this sort of all these sort of peaks and valleys and stuff. Um, so anyway, 
we're going to jump around and see how different each one looks. So that's cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four. And as you can see, each one has its own very distinct shape. Um, it's, it's really, it's something to, uh, to keep in mind, it really shows you why you have to spend this time because um, with each one being so different, it, it really benefits the engine to properly map these. I mean, it's literally almost like four different engines. Obviously, that's a bit of an extreme analogy, but you can really see just how different they are. Um, some of them have these really pronounced valleys and peaks in them, and um, it's important that you, you define that stuff properly because, as you can see, the, the uh, engine is responding really well. I mean, it's, it's kind of remarkable. We've picked up uh, from the flashed ECU, you know, 20 horsepower or something like that. And uh, just from having a, a pretty good baseline tune to now doing all of the cylinder mapping, and we're still not done, we've picked up 10 more horsepower. So, I mean, that's, that's huge. You know, there's so many engines um, that you can have a, a decent map and then you, and you really perfect it and you don't make that much. Um, so it, it's just crazy that, uh, we're not even done and we've already picked up 10 horsepower. Um, I'm really, I, I, it's, it, it's awesome. Really. I, it shows you how good Motec ECUs are and how good this engine is. So, um, anyway, I think that's going to do it. We really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed the footage this time. Uh, we are hoping that we may have an opportunity to ride this motorcycle once more this year. Um, so stay tuned for that. That might be something we have some test footage. Um, in the meantime, once again, thank you for watching. Be sure to comment below and subscribe. And if there's anything you'd like to see, just let us know and we'll try to accommodate for you. Thank you.